Adventurers. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Mary. I'm the co-owner of Two Foot Adventures, an ultralight backpacking gear store. Today we're going to be covering snow traction. Everything from micro spikes to crampons. What's the difference and what's the right device or tool for you? So many of you guys are probably familiar with micro spikes. Catula pretty much revolutionized micro spikes, brought them to the masses, and they have been a staple in outdoor activities for years and years, if not decades. Um, but before I get into Catulas, I want to first introduce you to Hill Sounds. So many of you guys may not be um, familiar with the Hill Sound products. Hillsound is a Canadian company, so they have a lot of experience with snow and ice products. Um, they make what I consider to be the best crampon or the best micro spike on the market. Here you can take a look at it. Um, one of the things that really distinguishes the Hillsound micro spikes from its competitors is one, the really thick, durable rubber that it's made from. So it has the thick rubber and it also has a top strap. In addition to that, it has these double points on both sides of the traction devices at the bottom. So none of the other companies I've ever seen actually have the dual points. In the event you had any kind of a failure with that, um, the Hillsound micro spikes are not going to come off of your feet. And with the really thick rubber, they stand to be your most long lasting, lightweight, durable micro spike. So a couple things I wanna go over with you about selecting the micro spikes. Um, you can see one here on, this is an Ultra Tusher Men's. And when you put on the micro spikes, it's really important that you get a good solid fit. So you can see here that when I wiggle this, there's almost no movement, okay? What that translates into is stability for you on the snow and on the ice. So you can see with this cross strap here, it just is a Velcro strap. It goes under the durable rubber. It really helps us hold secure these side pieces. So when you're walking on something that might be slanted a little bit, with this not being totally affixed to your shoe like the way a traditional crampon is, and we'll get to that, um, some of the rubber ones, especially the lighter weight rubber ones, they can start to shift on the shoe. This top strap keeps that shifting from happening. Okay, so that's why I really love the Hillsound micro spike above all of its competitors. Um, the Hillsound crampon or micro spike weighs 14.1 ounces for the small, all the way up to 16.9 ounces. These, so they are almost a pound. If you're into grams, it's 399 grams to 478 grams for the size ranges. When you compare that to the Catula micro spike, so here is the Catula Micro Spike. So as I mentioned, the rubber on these is not quite as durable. Um, and it doesn't have the dual, the dual attachments here in the back. It is still a very, very good Micro Spike. And this is by far the number one seller for um, Pacific Crest Trail through hikers. And that's primarily because of the weight. Okay, the weight penalty or the weight difference between these two micro spikes is only about three, um, three ounces. So the Catula micro spikes are, they start at 11 ounces and go to 13 and a half ounces. For grams, it's 312 to 382. Um, but again, they don't have the top strap on them. And with the single, the single connection points, if you have any kind of a failure during days and days of trekking, then your whole micro spike could become essentially useless if you have any kind of breakages. So here is that micro spike on a Topo Ultra Venture. All the different views of it here. One of the things when you are selecting the micro spikes and you're selecting the correct size, okay, all of the boxes, they have um, size ratings for, let me see if I've got a box here. You can see here it has like a trail runner 
versus a boot, okay? And they have different size ranges depending on what your footwear is. So a boot, you're going to need a larger micro spike. A trail runner is going to use a slightly smaller micro spike. Depending on your size, you may not actually change depending on the footwear, but if you're on one of the edges, you might definitely shift into either the size up or the size down depending on what your footwear is. Um, when you are trying on your micro spikes, couple of things you need to be aware of. One, there is no left foot from right foot. They both are just giant rubber bands. Um, they're labeled with front. It's really, really hard to see here, but they're labeled with front and it's usually bigger here. And then the back has like this tail part where you would grab with your hands to pull them on. They are literally just a large rubber band that stretches, put them on the front, pull them back, and then pull them up over your heel. Okay, um, again, there's no left from right. When you are pulling them on, you want to be sure you get good clearance on the heel, okay? So you can see that we've got clearance here. If these rubber pieces are anywhere down near the bottom, it is not a good fit. You need to size up. Um, anytime you have these rubber grommets near the bottom, you stand the chance of nicking this rubber, okay? If you're out walking in these for days or weeks, or um, if you wanna have very extensive use of these, again, I would recommend going with the hill sound. This rubber is a little bit thicker. If you hit a piece of ice, or if you, um, or many pieces of ice during all of your trekking, then you could accidentally split this rubber grommet, okay? So that's why you wanna get it further up. If you step on some rocks, something that's really sharp, you could split this rubber grommet. So that's what we're trying to avoid. The thicker rubber is definitely slightly more durable, but the most important part is that you aren't stepping on that grommet with every single step, okay? So you wanna have good clearance all the way around um, and all the way up on the top, okay? So those are important factors to consider when you're using micro spikes. Micro spikes are most appropriate for walking, say, in your favorite mountain town or on light or easy trails um, that might be snow covered or slightly icy. Micro spikes are not the best choice to use if you are walking on something that has um, extensive exposure. And by that I mean if you're walking on a trail that is slanted, that's extremely icy, where if you fall, you stand the risk of really injuring yourself, um, do not use micro spikes. You should bump up to something more like the Hillsound K10s. Okay, the Hillsdown K10s, these are a trekking crampon. What's really great about the, the K10s is that they flex. So unlike most crampons you might be familiar with that don't flex, the K10s do due to this really cool leaf spring bar they have. Um, the micro spikes come in small, medium, large, and extra large. The K10s simply come in one size. So they are adjustable very easily. There is a tab right here you can take and just pull it out and push it up. And there you have it. Super easy to adjust, too much, push it back in, um, very easy. The other really nice thing about the K10s is how quickly and easily they go on when compared to many other more traditional crampons. So these simply um, buckle. Okay, there you go. So they unbuckle with just a regular type squeeze buckle. There's one at the ankle and one at the foot. You can adjust the width of these pretty easily. So here I'm showing this on a Women's Lone Peak 4 RSM. And we are moving, these are quickly being replaced by the Lone Peak 5 um, all weather um, shoe or boot. Those will be coming out in another week or so. So the end of 2020, so they'll be available in 2021. But these are the current shoes, the Lone Peak 4 RSMs. Again, they've got the front buckle, the side buckle. You always want your buckles to be on the outside of your, your walking. So again, kind of like ski binders and most other binders, the buckle is gonna be, this is a left-hand shoe, it'll be on the left-hand side, on the right-hand shoe, it'll be on the right-hand side. Um, the K10s are specific for each foot. 
and you don't have to sit there and try to figure them out. They are indeed labeled right here with the feet. So as long as your feet match the crampon, then you're on the right shoe. Um, some other things with the K10, other than the fact that it flexes, which is super, super unique, is it has a latch right here to keep this from riding up. And it also has a, a little rubber band here on the side so that you can tuck the extra um, strapping into that. Um, so the K10s are most appropriate if you're going to be doing a lot of hiking. They are also a little more comfortable than the micro spikes, simply because they're not just a giant rubber band, they actually fit around your shoe. So if you were going to be, say, crossing the Sierras um, in May or June, and there is still sufficient snow, or if you're on the John Muir Trail, or if you're out winter hiking many of your local mountains, these are a really, really good option. These, um, they're going to be long lasting and they're comfortable, they're fast on, fast out, and their flexibility just makes for all day comfort. Another one that I like for how quickly it goes on and off is the Hill Sound Trail Cramp on Pro. Okay, the Hill Sound Trail Cramp on Pro, the main difference in it versus the K10s are the center bar. The center bar of this one does not flex, okay? So this one is gonna require a rigid boot. Um, if, you do, if you don't wear it with a rigid boot, you stand to snap the center bar. It also is easily adjustable. You simply uh, raise, raise this part up and you can slide the bar, select a different um, perforated hole and and size it correctly to your to your shoe. They're also labeled left and right. So you can see here, this one is a left one. This one has um, the anti-balling plates. The anti-balling plates help to reduce the amount of snow that builds up on the crampons when you're hiking around. So if you have really wet snow, it might tend to kind of clump. Um, the anti-balling plates will reduce that clumping. These crampons, they, they have what is like a speed system binding, um, similar to snow boots. You can just push them in here on the side. They go in very easily. These are quick to adjust. You can put these in and it's much easier when you have them on your feet. And then to release them, you just lift up the buckle and pull them out. So this is the way they look on the shoes. Again, this is the women's Lone Peak 4 mid RSM. You can see it's got the buckle over here and it's also got a buckle over there, but they are foot specific. So they're super fast on and off if your boot is rigid enough. If your boot is not rigid enough, I can't recommend enough to go with the K10s. The K10s, although I did not show, that, show them initially, they do come with a full set of anti-balling plates if you would like to put them on, um, which I would recommend if you're going to be walking in a lot of snow. So the K10s weigh in at 21.1 ounces or 598 grams, and they come in just the one size. So if you have a really, really big foot, you will probably not be able to wear these or potentially you could order directly from Catula if they have them available, um, a larger bar for the middle. But these are just the one size. The Hill Sound Trail Cramp on Pros, these come in two different sizes, regular and extra large. They do fit a variety of shoes. They can compact down and span back out. Um, and they weigh in at 26, no, 24.6 ounces to 25.2 ounces, um, and that's 698 grams or 716 grams. Okay, so now we're gonna move into a more traditional crampon. So those are gonna be the three you see over here. The higher end ones are from Gravel. Many people are not familiar with Gravel, but Gravel has actually been around since 1818. They are one of the pioneers in mountaineering. They're from Italy, um, right at the bottom of the, the Alps there. They have been creating uh, or making, producing, building, um, innovating 
all kinds of snow tools for hundreds of years at this point. So to me, they're very much a pioneer in this industry. Um, you can see right off the bat that these look pretty aggressive, okay? These are the Gravel AirTech Light. So it means that they are aluminum crampons. They do make steel versions, but the steel versions are quite a bit heavier. And since we focus on this channel primarily on ultralight backpacking and ultralight hiking, then I have picked out the lighter weight options here. So the aluminum crampons are really good if you're going to be on some aggressive terrain um, and you want the extra points but you don't want the weight and you are not climbing like ice falls these are not for ice climbing these are not for um, super mountaineering these are for crampons that are going to potentially put you in um, situations where there might be some exposure so you definitely so need something more aggressive than your traditional micro spikes maybe you want something even a little bit more aggressive than your k10s or something that is really really fitted to your boot um, that would be where the gravels come in again these are not for ice climbing don't try to take these out for that activity with the front tips here being only aluminum you um, on an on ice climbing you would stand to to ruin these and not only that but you could fall and get and seriously injure yourself so what we want to do with um the gravels these have actually a little bit of flex in them um not all of the gravels have a flex bar ours have a little bit of flex in them but i still recommend these to fit on a more stiff more rugged mountaineering boot like maybe the Tusher or this one is a Scarpa. Um, they go on like any other mountaineering boot uh, or any other mountaineering style crampon, which is you start over here at the buckle. Oh, I'll show you on the other one. Okay. You start with the buckle here. You take your, your lead here. You come out of the front come over on the side again you're going to go out you're always going to be going out with these so out you will now cross the ankle coming in from the back so you're coming out and then you just loop it back through the d rings let's see if i can get this through here and so then because these fit a wide range of sizes, they have a lot of tail. If these are your crampons and you're using them exclusively, you're not gonna be sharing them with somebody else who might have a much larger foot, you could cut them off and not have all this extra tail. You could also take and wind this up and put some rubber bands on the strap over here to hold it in place. These crampons, for how aggressive they are and for all the features that they offer, they are very light. They're only 21 and a half ounces, and that is 610 grams. So these are also twice as expensive, almost, as anything else up here that we've discussed thus far. So these are a very high-end, very, um, very traditional crampon that for most of you in the ultralight backpacking world and just for hiking adventures, this probably isn't going to be the number one choice. You're probably going to be more like in the, the K10s or maybe even just the micro spikes. But when we move on and we look at the BRS um, ultralight aluminum crampons, these are, they have many features that are similar to the Gravels. Um, the Gravels, you can see the, the spikes there, pretty aggressive, similar aggressive spikes on the BRS, maybe not quite as aggressive, but it does not have the balling plates. These are by far the lightest crampon in their class, and they come in at 16.9 ounces, which is just one pound, one ounce, and that's 480 grams. These would be appropriate only for somebody who has extensive experience or somebody who has um, is wearing a mountaineering boot as the, the aluminum bar is definitely subject to being broken. Um, so just due to the fact that it's aluminum and if you have a trail runner or something else like that, your trail runner flexes a lot. 
um, which I don't seem to have a trail runner here that has a lot of flexation, but you can kind of see here, this is flexing and it would flex more if maybe I didn't have the interior in there, but that flexation will break this bar. Okay. So I would not use that. Um, it's probably not your best choice. And then last in our setup today is the 14 point steel crampon. Okay, these are very, very sharp. They come with the anti-balling plates, um, a lot of points. They still have the same um, attachment system here in the front. Um, these are heavy because they are steel. They are also durable because they are steel. Um, but to give you an idea of the difference in weight, they are 31, uh, I'm sorry, they are 38.1 ounces, which is a full two pounds, 6.1 ounces, and weigh in at 1,080 grams. These are also inexpensive um, because they are steel. So for somebody who might be hiking Mount Whitney, who's looking for something that maybe they don't have to carry for days and days, go on a backpacking trip, these could work, okay? Um, and the price point of these are good. If you're only going to go out on, you know, some day trips, these are also good for that. But be careful, they're very sharp. I actually recommend because they come um, so sharp to do a little bit of walking around on um, some gravel um, or something just to wear down just the very ends of the tips. And I would not put these inside of my backpack, even though they come with a carrying case, because the last thing you want is something sharp to puncture your your bladder or anything else. So um, I think that pretty much concludes our discussion today of snow traction, the different, the different types and how to select the correct one for you. If you have any questions at all, feel free to drop us a comment below. And as always, um, hit the subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, let us know what you think. Um, let us know what other videos you're interested in seeing. We have a long list of great videos that we will be producing, and but we would love to incorporate all of your ideas. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Um, we are Two Foot Adventures, and you can shop on our website 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and it's twofootadventures.com. It's the number two footadventures.com. We appreciate you taking the time out to come and um, and listen to us today and learn about snow traction. And we look forward to seeing you again next time. Until then, have a great adventure.